Handful of people to jump through. Let's uh, let's get right to it. Um, let me uh, let's bring you up, Dean, on stage. Are you here? I am here. Nice. How you doing? Good. Cool. Cool. Let's talk. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk in a protocol. So, what's um, you know, I know you were at some events in Korea recently. Uh, mm-hmm. We've talked about it before. Um, you know, I think uh, something useful here is uh, maybe a general kind of state of stable tokens and in the Cosmos ecosystem. You know, what 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 were you seeing out there? What are what are some things you took from that uh, that experience and uh, and the general viewings of the industry right now? So there's still I hear uh, I hear a rattling by the way. There's still a a so there's a lot of um, uh, stablecoin efforts in progress, but you can really tell the difference between the ones that have you know, um, you know history of thinking about it, or have a um, uh, you know sort of specific financial goal versus ones that are sort of, that are opportunistically you know you know you know, pull something together quickly to try and roll out and, and, and slide into the, 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 the cosmos market. Now that, um, stable coin is, is so obviously critical to, to cross chain DeFi, but most of the, the, so there was a lot of excitement about, you know, upcoming ISD, a lot of excitement about, about exactly what the details are and, 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 and how, the, how, how it would affect every chain and that sort of thing. Um, but a lot of the, 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 the conversations like at Biddle Asia were, were um, stable coins across the different ecosystems, right? Where, you know, there's a stable coin, you know, there's Maker in ETH, there's um, stable coins in, in Polkadot, and of course there's the, the IST work in Cosmos. And, you know, my, my interest was mostly being able to share insights. Yes, we'll have some crosstalk over bridges of stable coins from these different ecosystems in the early days, but um, having a native stable coin is, is, is so clearly valuable and it's something native to the interchain that um, uh, you know, bringing in outside um, uh, stable coins from other chains can provide stability, but it doesn't replace having a native local stable coin. And so I spent a lot of time with the MakerDAO folks um, Nick Kundal in, in, in particular about liquidation, about oracles. And I think uh, Roland and I will talk a little bit about that later on. And, but that was just, it was just wonderful to get that kind of immersion um, with, with, with a bunch of other uh, teams working on this stuff. <clears throat> nice. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Any, if, if there's anything else, I, I, I know you brought up Roland. I think, I think Roland is, uh, is he a speaker here yet? Let's see. Let's get him up here too. No, he sent me a message. He's, he's restarting his Twitter. Yeah, Twitter spaces sometimes gets a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fussy, yeah. I saw a couple people like that. <laughs> okay, so I mean, I can I can start on one of the most interesting. Uh, talk about one of the most interesting technical details that is astonishingly hard to get from you know all uh, uh, most efforts on, for example, stable coins, which is what price and when are they doing liquidation? So you know, liquidation. Well, sorry. Before we dive into that, I will say one thing about uh, the Zcon, where I was visiting, you know, with the the the, the Zcash folk, and they're of course a, a big part of the BLD um, uh, ecosystem because they they were our of course first investor. And the interesting thing about um, Zcash goes back to liquidations, where Zec is traded in a wide variety of um, uh, ecosystems. And uh, or a wide variety of trading venues that's different from Adam, that's different from ETH, and so forth. And so, in terms of a alternative collateral, um, they might well be interesting as they move into the Cosmos ecosystem because they have, you know, because they have that nice um, critical element of of a a a audience for the token, even though its price doesn't move a lot an audience for the token and trading menus to be able to do um, quick liquidations. And so, you know, that dovetails nicely into the, into the liquidation conversations about how, do, how does that happen? So I see Roland has joined us here. Dean, quick question on that. Does that require yeah. them starting a zone? Or how, how do, what's the technical integration? Um, so, like? so it could be a zone. That would be the best thing. And I know they're looking at that, um, which is exciting. But nice. it could well be um, uh, uh, just... Um, uh, bridge, you know, a, a good, solid, robust bridge 
that, you know, that is well funded, that would allow Zek to come over and, and you know, from shielded accounts and act as collateral um, if that's what the 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 uh, inter community um, uh, accepts. And it's got all it's got many of the nice um uh, as I said, nice characteristics for a collateral, you know, even if it was bridged. So, so, so Got that it. gets us low hanging fruit, obviously, as they move into zone and bridge and come over, I, uh, over IBC, that's, you know, we all know that IBC is better than a bridge in that regard from a safety and performance and that sort of, and those sorts of characteristics. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, that's a great explanation. Thank you. I think, I think we have Roland now. Hello, Roland. Hey, Santi. Uh, hey, Dean. Yeah, having some technical difficulties with Twitter spaces, but here I am. <laughs> it drops hard. <laughs> yeah. Great, great. Yeah, no, I, I, I wanted to bring you up because I, I, you know, I think I've been asked from the community on this too. And, you know, what, what's going on within a protocol? What, what, what developments have been made? And I think you're, you know, on the product side uh, of things, you're the right person. Yeah, yeah. So, um, and, and I talked a little bit about this on the Agoric community call, but I think one of the, the critical things that we saw over the last several weeks is uh, finally a demo of our smart wallet integrating with the AMM and sort of doing doing a full trade uh, and showing that UX. And the smart wallet, for those of you who aren't familiar with um, Agoric and what we've built in the past, uh, it's our way of having an on-chain wallet that sort of allows you to sign with a third-party wallet like Kepler, um, but manage your Agoric specific functions in in a separate tab um, and that interaction means some changes to our dApps uh, and and the the work itself to actually make the back end work uh, for that wallet experience and that's been sort of long sought after on our end and we finally sort of saw an end to end um, you know at least in demo form uh, last last week uh, and so now the process is getting that demo into production ready code and uh, expanding the functions you know from just doing a swap on the AMM to being able to use it for vaults um, and and on all the other inner protocol functions so that's really critical on the on the user side making sure that we we understand all those UX flows um, the other big thing that we've done is started to expose contract data for RPC queries so um, that's really important working with partners um, you know we have gauntlet working with uh, the inter protocol to make sure that they're able to pull contract data in, understand the size of our AMM pools and, and distribution and trades and liquidations and all that stuff. Um, and so being able to query that uh, in a... Uh, an effective way has been critical. And so we're, we're getting to the end of that work too. Uh, and all of this is leading up to sort of a, a long lived end to end test of inner protocol. Um, so that's really you know, where the team is focused. And, and some of that work does end up being at the lower level uh, as well. You know, as you guys know, the inner protocol does sit on the aim on the Agoric chain. And so uh, the work at the kernel level and the JavaScript layer uh, that also also feeds in. Um, so yeah, so that that's really where the progress has been. Um, we also have a couple active discussions in terms of uh, protocol design, and I know um, you know Dean here. I, Dean, I don't know if you spoke to any of this while I was. Not yet. Uh, Okay, great. So, um, so yeah, so, you know, two, two things just to sort of surface this uh, to the community a little bit. There are a couple things that we've been working through. One really centers around liquidations. And so, um, as you know, the liquidation contract, you know, all the contracts um, in the inner protocol are sort of modular, pluggable, separately upgradable. Liquidation is sort of our, our key focus. And uh, we've had some conversations around um, how best to roll out uh, with the initial in, uh, liquidation. Um, so, you know, there's a few questions there. One, um, we get Oracle updates in, in sort of a minute by minute time frame, uh, and a lot of protocols liquidate immediately if, you know, the, the minute level price drops below your liquidation threshold. Um, those of you that are familiar with MakerDAO, you know that there is actually a significant delay uh, between the price that they get and when they choose to liquidate. And Dean had some good conversations with folks at Maker and really it, it sort of came out that that, that wasn't just a limitation based on gas. You know, they, <laughs> yeah, obviously right. they're using, you know, we, we know they're using chain link on Ethereum and, and so the, the prices are delayed, but they've really found that that's uh, helped in UX in, in giving users a margin call and some clear guidance that says, hey, you know, if you're below this this level, you will be liquidated in an hour. So please come do something. Um, right. and let, me, let, me, 
let me expand on yeah. that, right? You know, so they have an, an active price, which is what they're pricing, um, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the minting of, of the, the stable token with. And then they have a next price, which is in an hour, here's the price we will be liquidating and, and, and minting with respect to. And that was originally to primarily protect against, you know, if there was an Oracle issue or, or, or something like that. But that, that margin call effect is everyone can see that in an hour, the price is at X. And so liquidations are going to happen. And, and that gives people time to prepare. And, and in some important ways, it can lead to, to very nice orderly liquidations instead of, of, of it being, oh, the price is 30, boom, you know, these things get liquidated now. And there, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, just before you got up here about, you know, in seeing different stable token arrangements, you know, you can see ones that are about you know, solvency and stability over a long period of time, ones that are about um, it being a profit center, ones that are about, you know, um, yield farming, um, you know, there, there's various of these different things. For us, it's that it's the former, right? You know, it's, it's about long term stability of a currency across a large ecosystem. And the nice thing about the the getting that margin call effect is people can avoid liquidations and, you know, and, and, you know, even though liquidations in some protocols are a primary source of revenue, you know, for a stable token, you really don't want that. You really, you really want people to be in market with their tokens and, 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 and not, you know, uh, not funding it by scrambling to, 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 to cover their, their long exposure or something. And so right. uh, we really, yeah, our, our economist bill often says uh, the best liquidation is one that doesn't happen. Yes. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so, so yes, so that's, oh, and sorry, go ahead, Dean. I was just saying, and so, and so, I mean, you know, for us, it's, you know, all the pieces are the same. It's a slight different arrangement for us to be able to do that kind of, um, you know, that kind of thing. It was, you know, we had a, a work item that, that sort of triggered more detailed discussion that, you know, this has already been on the radar as, as one of the later work items um uh, uh 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 to do so it came up just at the time where we had these conversations um and so that's what kind of got got started the the you know now we're at the point of exactly what do we want to do there yeah and and so the other piece that interacts with that is is actually you know who is taking liquidations on the other side um and so that you know I, for those of you that that have sort of followed along you likely know that right now in the current code uh the the um vaults are liquidating against the local amm um with some measures in place to make sure that it they don't cause a significant drop so it'll stop liquidating if the amm diverges from the oracle price by a certain amount for example um, you know, the, the other piece there is as we can expand how liquidations happen, you know, we, we would love to be able to bring in third party liquidators that can either put orders in or um, deal with it in, via a pool or something like that. And we have a few designs that we've been working through there, which interact with how how the actual uh, price and timing of the liquidations work. So um, those are sort of two pieces that are in active discussion. Um, you know, I, I think if if we launched with the code as is, we probably would be fine. But yep. uh, we'd love to have a, a better version uh, before launch. Yeah. And we, we uh, I mean, you know, as I said, our fallback, is, you know, I'm, I'm a big fan of here's a thing that is that that is MVP that will work that will ship. Um, and and so we have a system that works and will ship. It will slow down. Arbitrage can then balance our AMM with with Osmosis and Crescent and what have you. Um, but uh, and you know, but you know, in when I was in Korea, I was talking with um, Hyung of Crescent about future plugins post launch to be able to do remote liquidation on on their order book, for example, but having a local order book or a local uh, liquidation pools, those are all mechanisms that are um, that people have proposed and they interact interestingly with, you know, at, a, at an economic level with choices about how does the Oracle liquidation happen um, uh, or sorry, how does the Oracle price determination for liquidation work um, that will affect how people can, you know, how much time people have to set up and handle uh, and, and uh, set up to, to collect liquidations when they come out the other end. And so, um, uh, so, so this is one of those things where, you know, we've got good solutions, but we know that the future will have better solutions. And uh, so, so one of the key things is roll out with something good and then be able to evolve going forward. Yep.
Yeah. So, you know, just wanted to surface that that kind of discussion that's sort of actively happening right now. You know, for any of you in the community that have thoughts, we'd love to hear them. Um, we've got a few more of those discussions happening, too. Uh, but given time on, on the call, I'd love to give it back to Santi and, and make sure we can get, um, you know, our, our next folks up. Yeah, no, that's great. So so I, you, you're talking about discussions. Should people jump into the into um, Commonwealth for that? We're, yeah, it's so actually Commonwealth is not a terrible place for it. You know, I, I usually lean towards Discord. That's where that's where a few of the engineers are hanging out. That's where we'll see stuff. Um, and, you know, you can tag us easily. So, you know, that's that's usually the best place. Cool. Cool. Awesome. All right. Thank you both. Yeah. Let, let's bring up uh, let's bring up Vanessa. How's it going, Vanessa? So far, so good. Glad to be here today. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yeah. Good to have you. Um, yeah, I know you had some things you wanted to bring up, so go for it. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you for the time. Uh, Enter Protocol, uh, you know, we're so happy to be launching. Um, reaching out just because we've been getting some inquiries on use of IST and other Cosmo zones. And so if you have any questions on that, I mean, my team is the one that you can best speak with. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, the kids, the kids are the man we're going to be at Cosmoverse speaking with different partners. And we wanted just to let you guys know that, you know, my team will be there. We're working on ways to present content of working with InterProtocol. And so just look out for that. If you want to speak ahead of time, we're happy to do so. But uh, our focus right now for my team is for those that are interested in IST use, speaking with those folks and also setting up meetings while we're at Cosmoverse. So feel free to reach out uh, either on Discord or another, and we'll set up meetings in early September to pick up those conversations. That's all I have for today. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Thing. Yeah, shout out to the Cosmoverse folks. They're, they're putting a lot of time and energy into planning that event. We're working closely with them, and I've probably said this a bunch of times already, but yes, Inter Protocol will will have a, a presence down there in, in Medellin come uh, September 26th and 28th. So yeah, really cool event. Um, really excited to speak with all the other zones. And uh, yeah, thank you, Vanessa. So um I know Anytime. on the thanks so yeah, much. Of course. And I know on the on the on the you know uh, I think we have Rick here. I, I'd love to just jump into some of the you know some of the governance activity that's going on. Um there there's a lot and I think you might be able to give us a good, you know, refresh for the community on, on what they should be looking out for and, and what's coming next. Yeah, thanks, Santi. I can do that. There are uh, or there is, I should say, an uptake and uptick in activity around governance. Um, we put out a community fund uh, process document for discussion a couple of weeks ago. We had some good feedback on that. We're incorporating that now. And then we're going to post that out as a proposal for a voting. And we're going to try to open that voting period Monday or Tuesday. We, we didn't want to do it here at the end of the week out of fear that the weekend was going to cause complications for people. And, uh, you know, we don't want to fail to reach quorum. Second, there is an economic committee uh, draft discussion going on right now, which is definitely something people should engage around. Uh, again, it's a discussion period. Uh, the idea being to you know, get community input and feedback to allow us to be able to refine that document and then get it out as a proper proposal. And note with the economic committee, there's a couple of steps involved in that. I mean, the very first one is you know, does the community want to have this entity and, and, and why should we have it? And that's really what this first proposal is all about. But then if that passes, and I certainly hope it does, DCF thinks it's, it's definitely the right thing for us to do. If that passes, there will then be a follow on proposal that sort of fills in the details and, and puts people in those seats. So the election of the committee is a second step. The first step, should we create the committee? Second step, who should be on it and, and, and the details around its operation? Uh, I think it's super important that we get through all of that process in advance of, of having the main net go because that economic committee really needs to be sort of looking at things in advance and working with partners like Gauntlet to get systems and processes in place and make sure that we've got, uh, you know, the expertise on board and the mechanisms in place so that we can have a, a resilient and, and truly stable stable point. So those are the two big things that are happening on the governance side. There's a couple of other things as well. You can find all of this in the Agoric Commonwealth. Um, you know, the Inter-Protocols Commonwealth is actually a subcategory of the Agoric Commonwealth. So uh, just jump into that one spot and you can take care of both things. So that, that's really the big news on the governance side of things. Um, just to hit a couple of other quick points and then I'll hand it back to you guys. Uh, the big news for DCF is our treasury is funded. Yes, we are a viable entity. Yes, 
A uh, huge shout out and a huge thank you to Agoric for making that happen. Um, you know, we're now in a position where we can start spinning up that flywheel and we can start making some things happen as, as a foundation with, uh, you know, uh, we've got our board in place, we've got our treasury funded. Um, you know, it's, it, it's been a really great week. Uh, and that also means for the, del uh, for the validators out there who've been waiting for us to delegate to them, that we're about to take steps and do that. So our goal is to complete uh, our staking activity, our first round, uh, sometime between 21 and 25 August. Uh, I'll send out an email to all of the validators that are affected by this and let them know the exact timing on that. But that is the plan at the moment, and I've got pretty high confidence in that. And just for the uh, edification of the community, we're moving a total of 45 million build into delegation. So this is a, a big shift in uh, voting power and in economics, uh, and we're really looking forward to it. And then the last item, and then I'll be quiet, is we have just launched uh, a revised version of the DCF website. It's our, our chance to to uh, step away from that MVP website that we had before, which was really truly minimal, uh, to something that's a bit richer and uh, looks better and is more professional. And so if you go to dcfoundation.io, you can see that. It just went up a uh, day before yesterday. Um, there'll be news there, announcements there, and uh, a vital blog. In fact, our first blog post is out today about uh, how to select validators for delegation and expect a, a regular cadence from us across you know the future and uh, i think that's it from us if there's anything else that i've missed santi let me know but otherwise i'll hand it back to you and thank you very much for the time awesome yeah what's the best way for people to reach you rick or the dcf in general well the dcf website has a contact form that winds up eventually getting dropped right into my email box so that's the best way to do it plus we are visible and active on Discord, and we are engaging in the Commonwealth discussions as well. Uh, so hunt me down on Discord if that's what you prefer, or drop us an email via the contact form. Uh, the contact us page also has a direct email address. Um, so we're trying to be easy to get a hold of. Awesome, awesome. I just want to know, I'm wearing that cool shirt you gave me at Consensus right now. So thank you for that, too. Sweet. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Rick, so much. Um, yeah, so thanks to all the speakers so far. You know, some quick things. You know, um, you know, Inner Protocol will be will be at Masari in New York City, September twenty first to twenty third. So if you're there, you know, shoot us a message on uh, on Discord, reach out to us on Twitter. Uh, we'll also be attending Cosmoverse in Medellin, Colombia, as I mentioned earlier. That's twenty sixth to twenty eighth. Those tickets are going hot. I don't even know if they're tickets available anymore, but um, yeah, that's a that's a really exciting event down there. Um, you know, two quick things, uh, you know, I'm getting asked all the time, you know, where can I read, where can I learn more about Inner Protocol? Best place, white paper. So we actually just updated the white paper. Um, I think it's officially the V1.0 now, so should have um, as up-to-date information as possible. Um, and then the next community call uh, for Inner Protocol is uh, going to be on September 15th, same time. Most likely might get pushed back a little bit next time, but yeah, September 15th for the next Inner Protocol community call. Um, so if there's anything else anyone wants to add, jump in. But I think uh, I think we covered most of the things we, we wanted to talk about. I'm good, other than a shout out to uh, uh, all the children out there that have been doing <laughs> interesting. Uh, all the DJs. It's, 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 <laughs> It is it is amazingly humanizing to have kids show up on a Zoom meeting. So 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 I'm always delighted. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Actually, oh, a, a good point too. Um, you know, for the wider community, if anyone has questions, let let us know. Um, you know, feel free to jump up. We'll try and we'll try and get those answered. Um, we have we have a little bit of time here, so we'll try that. Um, so I'll I'll leave this open for a little bit. If anyone wants to request, um, our gracious hosts can uh, bring those folks up to ask questions. If not, we will uh, we'll transition out. Yeah, we've got uh, two requests coming up. So first, we're going to bring up uh, John Snowden to the stage. There you go, John. John Snowden, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. All right, we had one other request for uh, Tardigrades NFT. Take it away. Uh, hello? 
There we go. We hear hey, you. Hi, guys. How's it going? Fine. Uh, we're working on an NFT project on Cosmos, and uh, we've been looking forward to get uh, an option to receive uh, you know, payments in, in stablecoin. So I have two questions. The first one is, when do you think it will be feasible to have IST uh, throughout the Cosmos ecosystem, uh, especially on NFT platforms available? So uh, I'll respond to that. So uh, obviously we are working, you know, cranking hard to get it out there. Our target is, you know, um, uh, you know, RC zero in the September timeframe and launch in the October, uh, you know, October, November timeframe. So soon um, that will be IBC accessible, essentially, you know, out the door. And so getting it over to Juno, definitely, uh, you know, and, 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 or Tardigrade or, or Evmos or Cosmos or what have you, that's, you know, extremely high priority on availability of IST. So, you know, in, basically in the next couple of months, um, we'll have, uh, uh, you know, a, a, as we get more concrete details, next, next, uh, um, community call and at uh, Cosmoverse and Masari and the like, um, happy to, 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 to connect up. Uh, Vanessa earlier uh, talked about connecting up and, and, and can keep you in, informed and get them accessible as soon as possible. That, that would be great because for us projects, uh, you know, when we have the, the, the income from the project, then there is a debacle in the market. Everything goes down. So yep. we lose value. So we're looking forward to have a stable coin, especially if it is a, a native to Cosmos. Yeah. That would be great. Uh, the second question is, uh, for us uh, um, creators that we don't have a technical background, where could we find um, uh, developers that are well-versed on Agoric in order to you know, like hire them to develop? For example, we, we would like to do a NFT project on Agoric where could we find developers that are well versed on on Agoric and how everything works? I can take that question. Um, is everyone hear me all right? Um, yep. We have yeah. uh, we've been developing a network of technical service providers, basically partners that are well versed in our stack for these types of inquiries. So um, you can connect with me. My Twitter DMs are open, and we can take it from there. Uh, and yeah, we have experts in NFTs and DeFi that we've been having uh, build open source components for developers to be able to launch their dApps easily. Okay, perfect. We'll get in touch with you. Thank you very much. Perfect. Yeah, I, I'd also like to jump in. And it's worth noting that one of those groups, which has been great, uh, they gave a workshop in NFT development uh, back in um, at the Gateway Conference. And there's a YouTube video there, which you know can give you a sense of of what's done. And once you bring on developers, they can uh, they could watch it as well. Yeah, we'll we'll get a link out to that. That's a that's a great recommendation. Thank you, Roland. Yeah. Are there any other uh, any other requests coming through, Anthony? Uh, no, no other requests coming in on our end. All right. Perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. On the dot, actually impressive. Cool. All right. Well, thank you everybody. Roland, Vanessa, Rick, Dean, Anthony for, for getting this together. Um, yeah, as I said, next inner, inner, uh, inner community call September 15th. Um, looking forward to seeing you there and, uh, thanks everyone for joining again. Thanks everyone. Thank you everybody. Bye-bye.